And I said to him, I was like, what does that T-shirt say on the back? And he's like, be unapologetically you. Mm. And I was like, right. I said, so what are we doing? I said, Show your scars. Said, Those scars mean that you got through all the things that were trying to hurt you. Mm. So you go up there and you were with pride. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's part of who you are. It's part of your journey. <laughs> Hello beautiful people and welcome to the very first episode of Live Your Truth. Thank you all so much for tuning into the podcast. Please like, subscribe, comment wherever you get your podcasts and if you're not already doing so, start living your truth people. Did the dog just fart as I press record? I literally think the second you press record, I just said, I was like, I looked at you like, was that, was that from this? (laughs) I'm pretty sure Rocky Mate, these dogs are comical. as soon as I press record. <laughs> these dogs are absolutely comical. <clears throat> I'm absolutely buzzing to do this. Same, 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 right. same. It looks so Feel free, get yourself comfortable. Yes, fresh as well. I'm <laughs> sweating. <laughs> it's set up now, it's good, it's good. The the first logistics bit, all sorted. Mm. We're off. Yeah. We're off to a good end. Oh, look, it tells you the time as well. I feel like anybody who does watch, I don't know if you'll release like the full thing of like it, from the fart to the ending. <laughs> I'm not sure like how far. And we'll Jimmy clip. breathe then. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> people so, are just going to imagine me rubbing my legs with my chin out like. <laughs> yeah, if people are just listening to the audio and not actually watching the video, they're going to be like, "Mate, that intro was weird." I'm sure someone farted, and then there was like a really weird deep breath. <laughs> anyway, we move. We move. I'm buzzing. Your phone on silent. Uh, that's a very good point. Yes, it is. We're good. We go. we're good. We're good. Are you on silent? Yeah, I am. You do good. know you've just turned your torch on. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. It's off to a great start. Right. There we go. Right. Dogs are floating around. This is going to be a chaotic podcast. No, I love it. One, it's it's real. I am so excited. It's good. I'm very excited to do this. So I feel like every time we meet up, <laughs> I need to stop breathing down the microphone. Are, are you okay? <laughs> I mean, you can take a few deep breaths, we can start. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> it's just because we're both so excited turn. to do this. Babe. She's like, I have something to say. <laughs> so excited to do this because I'm just, that I'm just breathing. Uh, Rambo, Babe. could you uh, stop trying to snog my guest, hon? Thanks. I mean, not that I wouldn't. You're Appreciate very that. You've got beautiful eyes. Come on, get down. Yeah, so get I was going to say before um, Rambo tried, tried <laughs> hogging the mic off me. Rambo. Shift. I feel sit down. like I feel like every time we meet up, our conversations naturally feel and sound like a podcast. <laughs> and there's been so many times we've been sat there and like, mate, if someone was recording the stuff that we're coming out with now, do you know what I've just realised? Is this a swear word podcast or not? I was like, the sh- yeah, of stuff. course it is. Okay, so if someone was recording I the shit that we come a out with, conversation without swearing. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, we've been like sat in Nando's or, you know, Costa, wherever. And like, we're having like these really deep chats and people are just like going about their lives and we're talking about yeah. like s- just some mad shit. And we always say, what if there was a camera on us? And now there is. I, I love know, it. Mate, I'm so excited. I love that. You know what I, th- I was thinking before? This is what I think we should do. Mm. I think we should do uh, one a podcast together every two weeks. Yes, love it. And then we will try and limit ourselves to maybe like an hour and a half. Each time, and I mean, when I'm it's getting when promise. it's getting up to that time, <laughs> we're, right, like, we're going to finish it now, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to leave us on the edge of our seat. We're yes. going to leave, you know, the two people watching on the edge of the <laughs> seat. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, like every single time we meet up, we do that. We'd be like, oh right, I've got two hours, and then in my head, I think two hours is plenty of time for just yeah. a coffee and a catch up, and I then it'll be like one hour fifty. I'm like, there's still like five topics that I've not hit yet. <laughs> So, um, I know. I feel like you come to our conversations with like a notepad in your head. Oh, mate, like, this is what I want literally. to talk to Jacks about, so and then we bad. end up discussing none of it. And yeah. then you just like I also get distracted, go wild with ADHD, and I'm thinking, yeah. can we stick on one yeah, topic? Yeah. No, I'm and sorry, I'll tell I'm you so about sorry. a little bit. <laughs> but to be fair, like we do, we get deep on them all, but then we also move quick, so yeah. it's like we, we yeah. cover a lot. You're I in can't believe heads. we're sat here. I can't believe we're sat here doing this. I actually am buzzing. I like, am buzzing. You, it's so professional. It's such a good setup. You know what? You haven't even introduced yourself <laughs> to right, yeah, whoever is listening. Uh, hi guys, I'm Lucy. <laughs> um, how how do we start? Um, probably how we know each other. So hey, stand on my foot. <laughs> it's like a very very big heavy dog. <laughs> it's a good job she's cute. Um, so we know each other through college. Yeah. So we had. Um, it's a weird one, me and you. We've said this before because oh, yeah, we had yeah, like yeah. technically like a ten year 
physical gap yeah. of not physically seeing each other, messaging each other all the time, always like, we're going to meet up, we're going to go to the Trafford, we're going to do this, we're yeah. going to do that. So I always stayed in contact, but like physically with the lockdowns and everything as well that I did like three years on, was only really keeping in contact online. And yeah. then after all the lockdowns and everything, we finally said like, right, now's yeah, the just time. Just the odd message on Instagram or the odd like, yeah. like a picture, react to a story. That's it. But in college, we were really good friends. So it yeah. was like, we needed to, and there was, I think there's always been like, when you meet someone who you know, I mean, even back then we're talking 10 years ago, like we're pushing 30 now. So <laughs> Don't. <laughs> even 10 Excuse years me, ago, I'm like, even two yet. Yeah, <laughs> You're still hanging on to 21. <laughs> Jax is only just turning two soon. Oh, actually, yeah, that's true. Like, yeah, you can, you've got a different birth to me now. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. No, but like, no, I'm just saying like, even, even back then when you meet someone and you can have, I mean, like just different kind of chats with, I mean, like, yeah, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like we've all got loads of different kinds of friends, different types mm. of friends, but sometimes you just meet someone and you think, oh, God, I can talk about that real shit with them. Yeah. And I think we always, ha even back then, yeah, yeah, we yeah, always had those yeah. kind of conversations. Yeah. Um, I've always loved having like proper deep conversations. Yeah. Um, and even at the time when I didn't even know myself. Yeah, I was definitely. just like, let's dive into you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But mate, that's why we do it. Because like, so, I'm the same. Like, I love learning yeah. about people and like wanting to get into their mindset and dissect and everything. And a lot yeah, of the yeah. time it's because it's stuff that we want to talk about. So it's kind yeah, of... Yeah, definitely. What's the word? Like, it's mirroring, isn't it? Yeah, It's like, 100%. I'll be, oh, how do you feel about this? And really, it's like, wait, Luce, how do you feel about that? Yeah. <laughs> so many people have, all, have said to me over the years, like, you come across as such an open book mm. and people think they know everything about you. Oh, yeah, 100%. And then when someone gets asked a question about you, they're actually like, actually, oh, I don't shit, really yeah, don't know, know much that. about you. Before, yeah. obviously, I, I started transitioning this was, but people are like, I don't actually know much about you because really, without yeah. anyone realising, you don't talk about yourself. And they know, yeah, so like, I seen like a quote once saying like basically like private people are like extroverted private people are very good at letting you think yeah you know a lot about them yeah. so I'm the same like people I'm very extrovert I love being around people but we'll normally talk about those yeah, people exactly, yeah. it's very rare like you know apart from like my close ones who know the actual ins and outs and then you'd ask them a question ask me a question about family and they'd be like oh actually I, don't, I didn't know that and yeah. it's like yeah because because we, <laughs> we, I genuinely focus. feel so excited to do this with you. Like, yes. genuinely, because Same. you're just a, be you're just a beautiful soul. Let's do this. I oh, know. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think like no, but we said this. So this is us. Th so this is one of the ones where I ran off on a tangent. The first time we met, I said that like, it's all about timing. <laughs> as cliche as that sounds, like I am a massive believer in timing. So even though we've always stayed in contact, mm. we was always friends. There was it was always love. There was, there was timings in both our lives that we needed to go through separately before we came yeah, back together to yeah, do yeah, this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And now, because we've done that, this will be stronger than if we did it, you know, two, three, four years ago oh when God, we were talking yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, I was never in a position to give my whole 100% self to any relationship, friendship, yeah. like, you know, relationship, anything, because I wasn't authentically me. So yeah. I would never have been able to, you know, do this or do anything that would allow my friends to see the real me, yeah. if that makes sense, because I wasn't the real me. And do you feel like you're at that point now? Yeah, I'm definitely Love at that point. Like, I would Love never have that. been able to, like, just sit here and do this with you and yeah. just be so, like, comfortable and not be worrying about whether you're having a good time, you are right, I'm you're this. Ball, by the you way. know, are you judging me <laughs> because there's like fluff everywhere? <laughs> you know, because the dog's like torn up the rug. <laughs> like. no, I love it. I love it. But I remember you said that. So when we first um so again this is where it'll bounce from topic to topic. Let's go back to the very beginning. That's <laughs> how, that's how, like, let's just yeah. start at the beginning. But I think because me and you know each other, we're just jumping in like, okay, so how do we feel now about like where you're at in your life? But no. So for anyone who doesn't know, like obviously who we are, um yeah, like back to the very beginning, I knew you in college as Jess. We were really good friends, had two years of obviously getting to know each other on that level that we're talking about yeah. now, like sort of deeper conversations than what I was having with other like, how old are you, 17, 18 year olds at the time. Yeah. Um, and then staying in contact. So obviously there's, there's some people listening to this now or who you will meet in the future who will only know you and only ever know, experience yeah, you yeah. as Jax. Yeah. So to people that you meet now and to people who only know you mm. as Jax, like what what do you say to them about about that stage in your life where, where I met you as Jess at, at teenage years when, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like just talk to us about that. Um, It's crazy, you know, because it, it, I have people in my life now who only met Jax and yeah. who have only yeah. ever known 
Jacks, and What's that, that is so like? that is so strange because they see pictures of Jess. They see you yeah. know when I talk about it or I show my video or they see something and they're thinking that doesn't it doesn't look like it doesn't it's not you. Like yeah. I can't. Yeah, it looks like you, and you can see your eyes and you can see your smile, but so many people like I just can't imagine it being you. And I think it's just because I sort of give off such an authentic feeling of self now yeah. that they people can't, imagine, can't imagine it being any different. But so, but I mean, the point of this podcast is called, I've called it Live Your Truth because I want to have more conversations and, you know, people see me online and I'm trying to portray that it's okay to be yourself. And I want people to be able to see and listen to the good, the bad and the ugly yeah, and know that. that that's what it comes, that's what you have to go through and that mm-hmm. it's really about learn, learning to enjoy the process Yeah, because it's not, there isn't an end goal. This is just, there isn't an end goal with transitioning, there isn't an end goal with life, there isn't an end goal with, with anything. It's just, you have to, t- you have to start enjoying the journey otherwise you're going to fucking miss it. There's like, a nugget to clip right there. <laughs> 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 I love it. Sorry, but, I'm ruining it. No, um, that's six. But yeah, and that's why. Really and point, and you know what? Point. I have I have sort of wanted you to get involved with this. So basically, for everyone listening, watching, um, Lucy is obviously my first guest because she's a very good friend of mine. She's got her own story and she is a beautiful soul. But at the same time, we have been talking about this for a long time. Yeah. We want to do it regularly because I want Lucy to be heavily involved in the podcast and have regular conversations and check in and I think that we can bring you some really good conversations and hopefully when you all get to know us you can send us in topics and questions and and we can make it um anything that that people want it to be because so many people leave me comments on like TikTok and Instagram be like I'd love I can't wait to hear you talk more you know and and you know you're doing so much as well like that it's just let's just talk about it all and give give combo. people yeah. the real insight into into ev- anything and everything yeah i love that as well that like the the amount because even in our personal lives when we just meet <laughs> up the amount of shit we cover the yeah. amount of conversations we have and like the depth that we'll go <laughs> to like down this you know, mate, it's, 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 it's gonna be a problem on the feedback <laughs> can you hear it <laughs> <laughs> like, if I'm you so tell me i'm breathing this, um, what if i go like a bit further away can you still hear me on the yeah i can headphones? still hear it it still sounds good I want to breathe. He's just very giddy, guys. He's very big, passionate. Big bad wig and breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my pie? <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Like, we, we can literally go. Give me some potato go. pie, love, please, <laughs> and a bam. Wig and kebab. So we can literally go from impersonating <laughs> wigginers and talking about wig and kebabs to, like, you know, how This is going to be a beautiful real, podcast. How do you feel about real life issues? <laughs> no, but that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I love. Like, when we meet up, it's been like that you know like since since we reconnected like we can literally go from like pure laughter and just pure banter and just dicking about yeah. to then like all this really serious topic so it kind of brings really serious conversations and shit that people want to talk about mm. in like a really light-hearted normal way yeah it doesn't have to be so heavy yeah sometimes like when you like i've done it with certain friends or you you know if it ever comes up at work i mean sometimes conversation is just time and a place but sometimes it can get really heavy really quick and i think just doing it like conversationally it's like yeah we can still hit all the same topics and i still want these really in-depth conversations but we can learn about it in a fun way yeah it doesn't have to be yeah. like sit me dream, down yeah. and like you know yeah. let's let's really analyze every, yeah. like, every point of everything and which don't get me wrong you know talking about certain certain topics and different things and and you know it is heavy and it's it's emotional oh, yeah, and, it, and that's important but if you can if you can you know go to joking or you know back and forth and and dip into it and still be okay and take the piss out yourself as well as telling your true story and and talking about everything that you've been through but also showing the positive on the other side of it is i think that's where the inspiration is like you touch people's emotions and you show them that there is a light at the end of the tunnel yeah like and it's it's so much more like (laughs) this way of doing it it's so (sighs) it's so <laughs> it's so much more relatable though because in real life like most of the time like that's that's what you want like you want to yeah. be able to say like oh this is how i'm feeling but then also you know break the tension a little bit and have a bit of a laugh mm. and then get back to it so um, and, and humor is like the number one thing that we all use to get through things oh yeah 100%. you know i say like to everyone if you can let yourself or your closest friends take the piss out of your biggest insecurities no one in this world will ever touch you it takes the power away yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Like if you, you own make an it, insecurity, it, it has no power. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Make it yours. Um, 
so let's go back to college because we do this let's go back to the very very <laughs> beginning like at what point so some of the some of the questions so when me and jack's first met up again so lucy's come with a notebook of questions oh mate honestly <laughs> This. so the first time we reconnected like what was I like I was so giddy I was like I messaged first I was like is there anything you don't want to discuss is there any any line that I could cross like tell me your boundary and Jax was like no go for it I was like cool okay cool and then like literally it was just yeah. like two hours of me just peppering do you know what though because if we don't have those conversations how is anyone going to learn do you know what that's what I absolutely love about you though is you never made me feel guilty or mm. silly or ignorant for asking because there was loads of things that like that yeah. I wanted to ask like I said when we first when we first got back in touch jesus like once she said there was no holding back i was like okay cool let's go and i was just going like everywhere with it i just wanted to know everything yeah um but i think it's really cool like i say like you didn't you didn't make me feel embarrassed or ignorant like there was no judgment at all and like anything oh. i said you answered with complete honesty but with also a laugh as well so i didn't feel it almost it encouraged me to actually let's go deeper then what about this yeah, oh, can yeah, i ask yeah. you about family yeah. can i ask you about this and yeah. the way you accept other people's curiosity mm. is is really admirable when Thank it's you. you who's actually going through yeah. the journey and the pain and the the transition in more ways than one when it's you going through that for you to be so accommodating to other people's unintentional ignorance is yeah. just amazing because yeah. i came with loads of questions and, I, and that's coming from love so yeah, the exactly, way you, you know deal what? with it yeah. with with all aspects of people i just think yeah. the way you're like i said the way you're accommodating everybody else's curiosity and the way you're encouraging it i just think it's amazing i think it's just so important because i think i think far too much people jump down people's throats yeah. really so quick and you and it makes you scared you to have ask. to give yeah. yeah and people are terrified of even mentioning the word transgender yeah. or or saying the wrong thing or not knowing what they're doing or getting in trouble or getting sacked or you know just yeah. get all these things that terrify people and i just think you need to you need to give people that time and that space to learn and understand yes, and I love that. you know if someone's talking about something and they're wrong about it you can give that person the information and if they yeah. still want to be how they were being then they're an asshole and they'll stay yeah. an asshole yeah. but if if they were acting like an asshole you gave them some information and they, they took it course. they changed their mindset and they changed what they were doing and they probably wouldn't do that again then you've just you've just changed the mindset and you've yes. just changed like it's unbelievable and i think that that is what that is how we change. Like, we don't change the world and society by jumping down people's throats because, don't get me wrong, if you're being a prick, like... Yeah, of course. I, I'd like, pull someone up, but yeah. if it's not malicious, I think that everyone deserves a chance to go, actually, you know what, that that can be I think a little of it that bit way. offensive yeah. or this is actually what it's, going, what it's like going through that or... Because yeah. people don't dive into something like transitioning unless it directly affects Personally your life. Affects yeah, and, 100%. You know, and, and my sister said... Um, about a year ago now and it's not that it's anyone's fault but unless it unless it directly affects your life like people don't look into it and they and you think it's, you think it's never going to happen to you mm. like it's something that you see you know in the media or you hear about something or whatever and you don't think it's going to actually happen to you yeah um and when it does it's like a massive slap in the face for everyone around me yeah 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 yeah. because i'd been processing for that for well. a long time yeah. before i dropped that bomb yeah but hopefully by Tell doing us about that. by doing things I'm like that, I'm dying to get into that stuff. I'm dying to get into that side of it. <laughs> we'll do it, yeah. <laughs> but um, by doing things like this, we stop that information being a bomb. Yeah, and it 100%. just being this is who I am. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be that big of a deal. And you make it personable and relatable, and yeah, like do you it know, yeah, like just me me sat me sitting there saying this is who I am should not be a dropping a bomb. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Dropping a bomb is, I've just uh, drove into your car on the drive, Dad. <laughs> like, that's a bomb. Have you ever dropped that bomb on him? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> but, um, you know, going in there and just saying this is my truth, that that shouldn't be a bomb and it, and it shouldn't be so frightening to just be yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, know 100%. what I mean? And that's, that is my mission. I love it. I love it. What was that like? So, like, obviously we have spoken about this off camera, but, like, that moment, not even when you told the family, when you knew you wanted to, because there must have been a, a long build of months, maybe years of... of Cue breathing. Of <laughs> That's where the deep breathing comes in, guys. So, like, there must have been... Tell us, like, the, the time period. Walk us through from Jess as a gay woman to Jess thinking she wants to transition to Jess telling her family. Talk us through that timeline. Wow. That's a long timeline. I know. <laughs> we got time. 
<laughs> Hang on, are we not talking about you? No, this is you. This is you. <laughs> this is the first episode of telling you what living your truth means. Um, exactly, let's jump in. This is your truth. So, so where do you want me to start from? From Jess as a gay woman feeling some sort of anger and disconnect because right. something wasn't right with Jess, but you yeah. didn't know what. Okay. Um, so, obviously, like, I mean, one of the most... Rocky, watch that camera. Sit down. Rocky, sit down. Sit down, pal. Lie down. Okay, bye. Oh, I just left. He's like, and I will not instead. be told <laughs> what to do. I will not chill in the podcast <laughs> studio. I will go on that velvet quilt cover. <laughs> He's a wise dog. <laughs> While Rambo sits at our feet. Lovely little girl. Tired now. <laughs> anyway, um, a lot of people ask me, did you always know? Mm-hmm. Like, have you always known? And there's two answers to that question because on one side, I had no idea mm. that that's what it was. Um, and it took me to the age of about 26 to start delving into that. But then when I look back at my childhood and everything I've I've done, everything I was feeling, every impulsive decision, all of that I look from the age of four or five and I, I 100% knew. Mm. So I can look back now and know. Yeah. But at the time, I didn't have the vocabulary to verbalise how I was feeling. And it wasn't a thing. Like, I was going to say, do you think not really not seeing it thing, in the yeah, media or yeah, being, and that having is, any information on it? Exactly. And that is the most important thing about visibility. What people don't realise is visibility reassures somebody that their life is worth living because yeah. people need to see on screen, that's me. Just That's how I sense. feel. Like yeah. like the women winning women the, the women winning the world uh, the football. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. For little girls, you know that. Like when I was young, even you know, yeah. you know, when I was wanting, wanting to, play to play football, football but being told you can't, it was never yeah. a dream that could ever actually become something because yeah. you couldn't be a professional women's footballer. You couldn't do that. Yeah. So why dream it? Yeah. And it's killing a dream before you've even begun to fight for it and yeah. little girls now will see that and go oh my god That's like and it gives me goosebumps it gives me goosebumps now talking about it because going through any sort of transition or trying to achieve your dream in any way mm. That's what it is like. It's it's the visibility of seeing you on screen, of seeing a representation of you, and going, "I am the revolution I'm waiting for." Love it. Like that is what I want to do. So it definitely wasn't around visibility wise. I mean, being gay wasn't really mm. like when we were young. For uh, for me, it wasn't. I, I weren't really, you know, around that. I didn't see a lot of it. Yeah. Um. So I only really started exploring my own sexuality when I was about. 18 19 really yeah so um so yeah so yeah like looking back now as a child you know and i see little things and i I think and my mum says the same there was always an element of being uncomfortable Mm. and anxious and like a disconnect no matter who told me how many times that you're beautiful and you're this and you're that it would not click in my mind i was just no I, I, I'm not all right. And for a long, long time, I just thought that it was bad mental health mm. and, you know, trying to fill a void, constantly trying to, like, find something else, trying to run away, trying to start again, you know, yeah. convincing me mum at 14 that I needed to move school. Yeah. There was no fucking reason I needed to move school. Yeah, I was happy. I was playing sport. On. I was doing yeah. this, I was doing that, you know. And in my mind, if I made my mum and dad happy and proud, then that would equal my happiness. Mm. And I just focused on doing that, like being good at school and playing sport. Well, they're the things I'm I'm all right at, so I'll just do that because if they're proud, then I'm happy. Mm. And I just thought that that was the that was the equation, that was what it is. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, I moved schools at fourteen, convinced my mum that I desperately needed to start again, and I go to a new school, and two months later, I want to move back. Yeah. Because there was no reason, and I just left everything that I was happy with. Yeah, of course. Like it's fucking backwards. So signs there that you obviously. I was just you don't chasing. Know what you want. Yeah, yeah, I was just I was chasing something, and I couldn't find it, and. I just continued to do stuff like that, whether it was going to university and leaving after two months, you know. Mm. I'll buy a new car, that'll fix it. I'll buy a house, that'll fix it. I'll do the house up, that'll fix it. I'll do my motorbike licence, that'll fix it. It's constantly I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do that, yeah. I'll join the military, obviously, which was one of the best decisions of my life. Mm. And <clears throat> I would, I never, ever regret that. And I'm so proud to have been a part of that. Mm. And should I not have... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rocky's turn on the mic <laughs> because Rambo had a go. So you want to say your piece, don't you? That's Where are okay. you going, Rocky? You're sitting up there. Um, 
I lost what I was saying now. Actually, bigger than me. Just saying about the RAF and you know oh. everything else was a distraction, but that was one that was actually a beneficial yeah, one. Yeah. So, so the RAF one was was obviously you know I was chasing something and I found something that made me incredibly proud to be a part of, and it gave me a sense of belonging. What I was chasing, and you're going to be able to hear Rocky licking my hand on this <laughs> microphone. Um, What's that thing like? Is it SMR, ASM, something like where they go like and do a lot of shit down the mic? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, please don't make me weird on camera. This is definitely a thing. Like, the open, like, packets of crisp and shit. And then they go, like... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. like, they, they tap the nails and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's Can what this is going to sound like. Come on, get out. Shift. Come on. Come on, sit down, please. Don't knock them cameras. Sit. Sit down. Sit. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, <laughs> we was, we was watching Friends. Like, you've made us come upstairs. They'll get bored. You don't have to be here. Want to sit on the couch? Um, yeah. So yeah. So obviously, just before I joined the RAF, I was I was starting to deteriorate mentally because I mm. wasn't. I think it's because I wasn't mentally, physically challenged. At least school gives you a routine. School gives you all those things, doesn't it? As much as I hated it, and I would yeah. never want to go back. <laughs> but um, joining the RAF gave me all those things. Rocky's gonna knock that mic foot at that camera. Rocky, come on, come on. Please. Sit down. Hmm. Go on, go on, Good sit girl. On the bed. Go and get on the bed. He's just looking at you like, nah. Go and sit down. <laughs> sit down. My, they're in. You can't be famous. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> You're already famous. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. There we go. We're chill. We're chill. Right. We're chilling. She's now. down. Chilling. Okay, go and sit down, pal. Um, for the fifth time. <laughs> we're still at the RAF point. We've still got, we've still got a few, uh, a little bit more to go on the timeline yet. So, um, so yeah, the RAF gave me so much, and he wants to sit on your knee. Mm-hmm. Um, you would not want this chair if I wasn't sat on it. You only want it because I'm on it. Oh, for God's sake, Rocky, <laughs> you're disturbing. He's stealing the show. He's getting on. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down. Sit. Right. No. You go in. Come on. He's all right there. You leaving him there? I mean, I I feel like this is is probably. Is that the clips you want for uh, for your new TikTok? (laughs) I mean, it's not the clips. It's fucking uh, weight. He probably weighs more than me. (laughs) (laughs) It's all right. It's all right. We're good. We're good. Ramble. Like, why the fuck are you on a chair? Okay. Uh, right, so it'll be me breathing down my head. We're in the RAF now, yeah. Move the cushion, you'll have more room. He's good, he's good. Um, Chilling. For God's sake. <laughs> He'll jump down in a sec because he's not comfy. God, go. You're ruining the audio. <laughs> it's a, lot, a lot of editing for you now. <laughs> God's sake. Okay, right, so let's, let's take it back then for like a clear sentence wise. Let's go from. From 14 year old, you changed school, then you went back. From leaving school, you're at college. This is the age where you start exploring your sexuality. Yeah, 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 and then yeah. the RAF comes after that. So let's just go back a yeah. couple of years. So like, talk to us about so that first moment where you thought you were gay. I was working in Total Fitness at the time, mm-hmm. um, in Wigan in the gym. And I was about 18, yeah. Um, sort of suffering with like bad mental health, just kind of like really anxious and not really knowing where I fit, not really knowing, you know. <laughs> I didn't know who my mates were. I couldn't, I couldn't like, I didn't have any faith in anything. Like mm. I would just wake up and be like, right, are my friends still my friends? I was so anxious all the time about everything. Like, you know, when you used to overanalyze text messages and like yeah. someone will give you a full stop and you're like, you're not my friend anymore, what have I done? <laughs> yeah. Like you only give you two kisses instead of three and I'm like, shit. And Start, like, my head it. just proper started falling off. And I used to get like, um, find myself like really attached to, to certain friends maybe. And that mm. started, started making me, question what was going on like why why was i getting sort of i'm gonna move, i'm gonna these dogs are leaving oh really they're doing <laughs> your wedding i mean he's quite chill now lie down she's jealous now lie down um you're ruining it <coughs> so 
yeah, I just I just became really anxious around my friendships, around people, and, and didn't really know what was going on with me. And and I obviously had applied to the RAF, but I had to wait for about twelve months because they weren't recruiting at the time. Oh, right, okay. Um, for what I was going in, and uh, and I remember my mum ringing me up once. I was at Total Fitness, and I was like on reception. I was like, "Good evening, Total Fitness Wigan. Jess speaking. How can I help?" And my mum was like, "Jess, love are you, gay." <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, "What? Like, why are you ringing me what? up?" Mate, she rang you and just said, just outright said, are you gay? Yeah. You'd never, had a, wait, you'd never had a conversation about this before. Like, and she just rings you and says, are you gay? Like, genuinely, like, completely baffled me. I don't know where it come from. And like, were you, did you know you were at the time? No. How I, did she know I you were? I didn't. Like, they, they, they said they knew from being, from for years. They, and what they made her knew. just ring you that day? Like, I, I just don't know. Like, my mum is literally a witch. Like, she was born on Halloween. She's so psychic. She's just, they got the best intuition in the world. And, and you well, know, how did you respond? I, I don't know how it came about that. We must have had some sort of, I must have been, oh, I know why it was. Because someone who I was working with, one of the lifeguards at the time, was a gay woman. And I'd mentioned it at home. And she must have thought, you're mentioning that for a reason. Right, okay, why are you bringing that up? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember now. And because uh, I didn't really think about it, but I just remember that moment of answering the phone. But um, yeah, I, I, she, she was like, well, you've been talking about this girl that you've been working with. And I just, it was just on my mind. I just wanted to ask you, you know, like not bother. I mean, she wouldn't fair have play been, to her for just, you know, like, she just been, opening up the conversation. Yeah. Because there's plenty of families who have just ignored that and made it 10 times worse. So exactly. the fact that she just addressed it yeah, and was like, is there exactly. anything you want to talk about? And I think they'd known for a long time. And, um, and so, I, but my response was like, what? Like, no, like, of course I'm not like pure in denial. Yeah. And w- were you in denial in reality in yourself or did you know yeah. you was just denying to No, you? I was pure in denial. All oh, right, okay. Like, so even I was yourself. trying my best to be that Wigan girl, like yeah. have long hair, go out in dresses, yeah, I you know, have been there. wear the heels, <laughs> have boyfriends. Like I was really, really trying my best to do that. And, mm. and, you know, I mean, I had boyfriends who I cared a lot about and obviously they, they, they turned out to be just like really good friends to me. Mm. Um, but I, I was trying to, I was trying for that to be right. I was like, why isn't that, why isn't that feeling like good for me? Why am I, you know, what's not right here? Um, so anyway, (laughs) that happened. But then after that, I then started to question things more and more. And and you you know what it's like when you start watching, you start watching, uh, (laughs) you start, (laughs) Rambo, come here. That's enough now. Um, yeah, and you know what it's like when you're like trying to figure out your sexuality and you start watching the L word and you're like, I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, there's so many people who are going to be listening like, to it's like, oh my I God, know. I did like, that. Oh, actually, we can listen to Jack's talk about lesbian Orange is the new black. Yes. We all did it. We all watched it. We all wondered. <laughs> are you a Shane or a Carmen? <laughs> We all had that moment. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and I love the fact that I can I can relate to so many people. Yeah. Like literally, I've lived life as a straight woman, a gay woman. I'm now a straight man, and even I, but I that, love it. but I, I'm a straight man, but I'm of, of trans experience, and I don't want to put myself in a box because you know I can't be asked coming it. out ever again. I so I just that. accept me for who I am. What <laughs> I want to wear? If I want to wear a dress and bring a man home, I will. If I want to wear a suit and bring a woman home, I will. <laughs> just leave me be. I'm never coming it. out ever again. I love it. Yeah, you've been you've been through it. I'm just not doing it, mate. I can't. <laughs> not be asked so what was it like so, then when you actually when you said to your mom oh actually yes yeah, so let's yeah, come am. out for the first time so yeah, basically what was coming out for the first time like yeah. so basically i started delving into the world of of being a lesbian and um at that point there was certainly no gay women in wigan who i knew of probably yeah. ouch i feel like that must sorry have about this but we've got uh, a repeated interruption from the two horses that live in my house <laughs> so we're up to you now Jess has just You're come not out. bored yet? No, mate, I, lo- I absolutely love it. Like, it's so interesting to me. But the thing is, because it's your life and you're used to it and you've probably said this story like so many times. Everyone. No, yeah. not at all. It's so interesting. Um, and, and like What's that one talk about you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm dodging that quite well. No, but like it is like because because you've said it so many times or because it is your life and it's so... It's so um, what's the word? Like, you're just so used to it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So it feels like... 
it might feel a bit repetitive or monotonous to you, but someone who's never heard this before, you are the visibility that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So some kid listening to this now, 14, 15 year old thinking, God, I feel like I hate my school and I'm, I'm feeling a bit weird with my friends and something's disconnected in me. And you know, th they're gonna relate to so many things that you're saying. So even though it might feel like you've said this before to me, or you might've said this to your family or you've experienced it yourself, yeah, yeah. saying it out loud, there's some kid gonna be sat there thinking, oh shit, this is how I feel. Like maybe I should talk to my mum about it. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it'll open up conversations. So no, it's dead, dead interesting. Yeah, I hope so. And I think I do it's like just subconscious because I'm like, are you bored? <laughs> no, no, not at all. And the thing is as well, like it'd be very easy for us to just go, okay, this is Jax. This is Jax's life. This yeah, is what yeah, he yeah. wants to do moving forward. But we need to know what got you to that point. Yeah, 100%. Do you know what I mean? So, 100%, yeah. So at the minute, we're, Jess has just come out as a gay woman. So I haven't yet. <laughs> oh, have you not? Have you not come out this far? No, I haven't yet. So, um, just watching the L word. Yeah, so we're just watching it. the L word, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to get stronger taste. So, so many uh, audio clips. This is going bad. No, it's not. Right. It's good. Um, so, anyway. Um, yeah, so I, I was diving into the world of the L word thinking, shit, I'm a lesbian now. I'm a gay woman. What am I going to do? And... Um, at this point, I was still like battling with this. I was still like going back and forth and whatever else. And obviously, that the time came where I joined the RAF. Mm -hmm. um, so I, d I hadn't come out before I joined the RAF. You, I thought I always thought at no, that time no. that was you came out first and then joined. No, no. So I joined the oh, RAF right, first. Okay, cool. see, that's something I didn't know. When just before I turned twenty, I joined the RAF. So I was nineteen, and I was in the RAF for about six months before, and I'd, I'd obviously then was just thrown into this world where. There is so many gay women, yeah. so many powerful, you know, they know the self, yeah. they know who they are. They're role models they know, for you. Yeah, like just these amazing, strong, athletic, you know, women who who were gay and who loved the career and who played rugby and who were doing all these things and they owned it. And I was looking at all these women thinking, that is who I am. Yeah. Like, that's who I am. Like, boom. Like, I... And that gave me, you know, the, the confidence to sort of go home and, and tell mum and dad. But at the time, I didn't know anyone in Wigan. I didn't know, you know, um, I didn't know how they were going to take it. Mm. As amazing as my mum and dad are, I, you, you always, I think, and you probably know the same, you always have a, a tiny percentage of you where you think, what if they don't accept this? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, of course. And even no matter how amazing those people are, yeah. and they are, so I went home from the RAF one weekend and sat, sat them all down and was like really, really built myself up. Well, like, like full farm mum, dad, brother, sister. Yeah, like yeah. really, like was really worried because, and, and at the time, and like now thinking about that, I think that's mental because gay is so, you know, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to so many more families now, gay is nothing. Like it's just, yeah, yeah, sound like yeah. it's, it's so much love. better. Yeah, yeah. Um, there wasn't that amount of visibility then and it wasn't as as sort of well known and whatever else but um so yeah i sat them all down at the dining room table and i was crying my eyes out like i was terrified i was yeah. I, and i was really embarrassed uh, um and i was like squeezing my sister's hand crying and she took a picture of it and i had it tattooed on my arm oh my god i love that so like that picture there that picture there of us holding i've of seen us holding that. i knew hands. that was you and nick but i didn't know that was the story behind it so, so i knew that was you two yeah, yeah, but yeah. i didn't know the story so i was squeezing her hand trying to tell them i was gay crying and she took a picture of it so i had it tattooed oh, on me so i didn't even get around to saying it like my dad was just sat there and he was like you're gay aren't you <laughs> <laughs> just just said it like your mum did when she went are you gay just ring you just, just come out of it and i was like yeah i'm gay and what was like is that was, okay what was the response they were brilliant they were like oh we've known for ages that's like, what i mean because like, if your mum had asked you previous to that yeah, like, yeah 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 they were just like so yeah we all know shot. like my brother was what probably about 13 at the time he was like yeah sound can go back on playstation just like, not asked that's all just like, <laughs> boom you know that. but they, they were just incredible and, and we sat there and we spoke for hours about everything and and there wasn't the knowledge and the understanding then and, mm. and my mum was they were asking all the questions and you know um so what does this mean you know do you like boys do you like girls do you like both do you don't you, you know all these questions and like a lot of people at the time i was like yeah no I, well, I'm, I just like the, you know i just like the person or whatever else yeah um and then obviously sort of as you get more comfortable don't you, you start owning a bit more owning that it, that, yeah. you, that you know you're you're gay and you're a gay woman um and so they were amazing that time um and then obviously i came out 10 years later um and yeah they were amazing again but we'll get on to that 
so how long did the peace last in you from <laughs> being just as a gay woman in the RAF and feeling happy? Mm. How long before that that was no longer so enough? So that happened when I was about 20. So then I made the decision to come out of the RAF when I was 24. So for the first few years I was in the RAF, I was I was busy, I was playing rugby, I was traveling all over the world. I was on a tactical unit. So wherever a military plane went, we went with it, mm. you know, guarding it, guarding whatever was on it, went to the best place in the world and the worst place in the world. Um, and, and, uh, and then I, as well as that, I was traveling everywhere and, you know, getting time off work to go and play rugby basically. And mm. I was playing for the RAF, I was playing for UK Armed Forces, I was playing um, for a premiership team I was I was doing all these things and they really sort of push you when it comes to sport and stuff like that and um after about three years they posted me to um a different base to basically play more rugby to be in a better location to play rugby when I wasn't working um and that resulted in me being in a desk job ah right okay which is not for people like me and you I've done that (laughs) Exactly. So I was in a desk job and it, it took maybe a matter of weeks before I'd massively just went, whew, yeah. like just I completely so much. deteriorated because I had been living a life where I just fill a void, fill a void, fill a void. Mm. And I'm sat at this desk and there is no distraction. There's no one to like pull me out of this mindset. You know, there's nothing to do. There's nothing to distract me. I'm just... So I'm just sitting here and either, I'm just it, sitting yeah. with Jess mm. and I'm sitting at a desk all day and then I'm going back to my room at night and I'm doing the same thing all week and all I have to do is sit with Jess and I have to just be Jess. Like that's, and that is the thing that has always got me. I have to, I can't just sit and be Jess. Mm. And um, so I started to sort of deteriorate quite quickly and then I, I ended up getting sent on tour um, and I went and, did a, went and did a four month tour and while I was away on tour, I decided that I was going to come out of the RAF, mm. that I needed to come home. And that was a pretty massive, not impulsive decision, but ba- very, very based on emotion. Yeah. Because I loved the RAF. Yeah. Absolutely it loved it. But I just couldn't, I just couldn't function anymore. I was mm. just... At this point, did you know you wanted to transition? Or was it no, just still no that idea. void that there's something wrong, I don't quite know yeah. what, so just I'll leave I the RAF no and idea. that'll distract me. And yeah, 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 yeah. I had no idea. And, um, and I made that decision while I was on tour. And or when you're in the military, you have to, when you put your notice in, that it's a year's notice. Fuck. So, um, it's a long time to be unhappy. Well, yeah. So, um, so I was obviously on tour at the time, and I I came back from tour and I'd put my notice in. I wasn't great anyway. Just you know, you're a bit out of sorts anyway when you come off back off tour. And I literally did not leave my mum's side for two months. I went her dressing with her. Oh, yeah, I remember you saying like, I literally just did not leave her side. I was crying every day. I just couldn't, I couldn't look at anybody. You said you became more ir- irritable as well. Yeah, Stuff I was like, like so, yeah. so annoyed. Like, you know, my partner who I was living at the time, like, I don't know, and this is going to sound horrendous, but like telling me I'll make you runny eggs. I don't fucking want runny eggs. Like, if, the runny <laughs> eggs if the runny eggs weren't runny, I'd be like, yeah. having an absolute oh, yeah, meltdown yeah. because I'm like, yeah, but you've told me this. Like, this is what you've told me. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's obviously not about that. It's no, it's, it's, a, it's yeah. yeah. And a mixture of obviously coming back on tour and having your own mental um, health issues and those put together is just, you know, ridiculous. And um, I'd be in the garden, like, fighting with the bin. Like, I'd just be absolutely gone, like, my head. <laughs> and over nothing, over yeah. absolutely nothing. And yeah, it's mad, isn't I it? think I've always been that person in life where I can deal with all the big things, but, like, hit me with a little thing. And I'm like, I cannot go with this. <laughs> 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 but um, but anyway, so I was I was off sick for a little bit um, from the military. And then, luckily, my application to the prison service went through and I got out of the RAF, well, like, a few months earlier than... What I would have done, basically. Yep. So you um, went straight to the prison service. So from I the went area. straight into the prison service. Yeah, and you know what that was? That was just like, right, yeah, I'm great now. Yeah, like brand new life. That's it. <laughs> new distraction, new uniform, new routine, new schedule, new challenge. Exactly. So, for me, the uniform has always been a big, a big barrier, like a big safety net for me. Yeah, absolutely. Not a barrier, sorry, because I don't have to be Jess. Yeah. I'm like, I'm the RAF. 
or I'm the rugby player or I'm the prison officer or I'm whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I'm so it's like productive. Your sh- or armor almost, isn't it? Yeah, and I'm saying and I'm the same now. Like I'm so productive in uniform. If I finish work at dinner time and I'm in my uniform, I can go and do so much shit. But if if I like come home and get changed, I'm like, <laughs> usually, yeah. I'm obviously better now. But at the time, yeah, 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 of course. Having a day off work and not having to get up and put that uniform on, I didn't mm. know what to do with myself. I was just like my mind was in turmoil, and um, and so I went straight into that and you know like you said it gave me a new purpose it gave me this new uniform you know it was sort of a good in between of of military life and civilian life where i could could be at home but i was still in a a service yeah and i was just sort of and i was around my family and uh, you know i was doing all those things so that was it was perfect for me at the time and and you know you're dealing with some like different things every day and you're helping people and you're talking to people and different prisoners and it was it was great and it's a job. And it is a very challenging job as well. well I mean, it, I've never done it, but yeah, <laughs> like, I know like, quite a few of it. It's a as very a prison challenging officer, job. You are literally everything. You're like mum, yeah. dad, therapist, nurse, fireman, yeah. policeman, like yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever it is. You know, you, you're a shoulder to cry on, and you're the person they they attack or whatever else it could be. Um, so it was different, and it challenged me, and and it gave me a new lease of life. And so it's just, just worth filling in another void. It's worth noting at this point that everyone in the prison service said met you as jess yeah 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 so i i was miss feely i was i was jess and, uh, for the first probably three years of my prison service career and what was it like going back as jacks so do you want that question or do you want me to carry on yeah let's let's fill the gap and then we need to go <laughs> to yeah i do this <laughs> so um so yeah so that filled a void for a good couple of years um and then i was having a conversation with someone about uh mental health right Mm -hmm. and at work this actually i need to tell you something before i before about this so when i came back off tour and i've missed like quite an important point here i had a conversation with my mum right and don't get me wrong I'd, ha- I'd had fleeting thoughts about wanting to be a boy throughout my life like just fleeting thoughts like nothing nothing real because I don't think I ever I would have ever allowed myself to mm. really think about it because I never thought that it would ever be something that was possible mm. and when I was little probably going up to being about 20 21 something like that probably longer I used to say little sayings in my head and I used to just think it was like some form of like OCD or just like an anxiety thing or whatever. And I used to say to myself oh, over and over again, this is going to make me sound like a bit crackers. I used to say, um, please don't anything bad happen. I used to say that twice. And then I used to say, I love being a girl. Um, I wouldn't change. I would never change anything. And uh, please be OK, everything. So you think you were trying to and reaffirm, was, you were trying to trick yourself into affirming, yeah, I'm happy and being a girl. from being even though you so were. young, I would literally say these like these like strange affirmations to myself so from yeah, being a child, yeah. like over and over and over again, no matter what I was doing, that would be going around in my head. Like I, I, must, I must have said it 50 times in bed in my head before I went to sleep. Like yeah. just, just this compulsive, like, th- like... I don't know, this thought in my head that wouldn't go away. And I wasn't thinking anything of it. I just had to say it. Mm. And that that went on into my like into adulthood. Like it was constant. And it's so so that had always been there. Like I was trying to it was like I was I look back now and I think, oh my God, like you are convinced you're trying to convince yourself yeah, you're that you're happy being a girl. Yeah. Like Is literally. That the problem? Did you tell your mum you'd had that? No, so I didn't tell her that. So I, I sat down when I came back off tour and I was like I was obviously I was severely depressed like I could not stop crying like like heart broke all the time like and not just sobbing like not just crying just like sobbing mm. all the time and um and I said to her one day I was like is it because I want to be a man like is, is so that that's the first time you brought this conversation yeah yeah and I wasn't thinking it I wasn't thinking whether it was true or not I just knew it was something that was in my yeah. mind and I, I was like is it is is that what it is like is that why I'm so depressed do I, do I want to be a man? Like, should I have been a boy? Because I've spent my whole life being called a man. Mm. Like, even when I was out in dresses and in heels and had her down my back and have people coming up to me and pose being like, you're a bloke. And it, it would devastate me because mm. being misgendered in any way, shape or form is 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 heartbreaking and it's not nice. And it, it makes you feel so ashamed of yourself. Like, I used to get shouted at in women's toilets. <laughs> like, yeah. Thank you, yeah, I'm a woman. Um, but 
but yeah, I said that to my mum and and at the time my mum was like, No, like of course not. Like you're this beautiful athletic woman, like you wouldn't be you if you was a boy. You you, you you're unique, you're you, everyone loves you. Like, with love, just trying to reassure you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And and she says now, like, if I'd have t- if 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 I'd have turned around and said yeah, Jess, you know, yeah, you, sh- you should be a boy. And then you'd have gone, okay, I'll do it because my mum said. Yeah, it's and it, something And it was the wrong decision. Yeah. Then she would never have, com- she would never forgive herself. Mm. She was like, it has to, it had to come from me. It had to come from me. Mm. And I think she knew a little bit then that there was something going on. But I think she believed still that, you know, I, I was meant to be a girl because to everyone else, to her especially, I was this beautiful athletic woman who just mm. could not see how beautiful she was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I had that conversation and because she, and her reply, you know, she said that and, and we both just sort of, you know, put it to bed again and suppressed it and, and, uh, and then obviously like about a year late, two, two years later, I was in the prison service and I had this conversation about mental health and, and I said to someone without even a thought about it, oh, I, I used to, I used to think I wanted to be a man. Like and, I, and I just said it thinking I got over that. And that reawakened it for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And I was just, I, I'd, but I'd said it like like it was like nothing. Like, yeah, yeah, I used to just, I used to think I used, wanted to be a man. I, I, I questioned everything, you know, talking about how bad my mental health was in the past and whatever yeah. else. And as soon as I said that, mate, boom. Couldn't go away then. Yeah, like it was just, and I was, what, 26 at the time, and it was, my head just went boom, like gone. Constant thinking about and it. And then you, did you start researching on your own before yeah, you? Yeah, I just delved into the world of YouTube then mm. and found like all these trans men, you know, documenting the transition and actually living a life and this can this is actually possible and whatever else. And for a good year, I was obsessed with yeah. these YouTube videos, and right? Knew. No, nobody knew. And I'd used to like just sort of talk about it a bit more, like with my ex partner and then bury it again, but not really say it. Just like dance around talk the about to try gender and, bring it up. and things yeah. like that, yeah. And um, and I and I and I delved into this into this this whole world of YouTube and and trans men living living the life and being happy about it and being models and being all these things. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> so a year of being obsessed, but yeah. quietly in secret. Yeah, quietly obsessed, and um, and I and I found myself, and I, but I was still under the under the impression that this could never be me. Like never in a million years could I do that. Oh, never really? in a million Even years. Even though I was obsessed. It felt so weird though to be yeah. obsessed with it, knowing you really wanted it, mm-hmm. but thinking it would never be a reality. Yeah. I was just like, that's brilliant. I'll just live I'll just live vicariously through them. You know, I was oh, just okay, like so. absolutely no chance that will ever be me. I'm just gonna watch these videos and that'll give me and a little bit though, of Why though? Because it was because it was too big of a junk because it was too scary because I just you didn't like, know anyone, like even like to think about doing it in, in a place like Wigan, you know, it's yeah, yeah. It's a small town and it's it's scary and it's yeah, you know, it's it's just one of them things I just thought, I can't do that. I can't tell my mum and dad that. When did it get to a point where you was like <laughs> so, um, I have to? So that obviously happened for like a good year and what I didn't realise was the more I delved into that, mm. the more comfortable and accepting I was getting about probably realising that that's what I needed to do. Mm. But my mental health was was drastically dropping again mm-hmm. because the void had been filled and it had a cap, it always has a time cap, yeah, like yeah, yeah. you can only do it for so long. Yep. And um, I didn't realise but I was becoming... Uh, not the prison officer that I was Mm -hmm. you know I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't being the officer that I'd always been you know I was and in a place like that when you're getting progressively more angry yeah energy meets energy and and you if you want to cause an argument or cause a fight or cause ruptions or just take your temper out on something in some way or bollock or whatever it's it's the most volatile place in the world to be and it's I I probably started to put myself and other people in a little bit of danger mm-hmm. because I would just flip like that. Like yeah. I've got the, all the patients in the world now, but back then, and I did when I first started, but during the when time that tension that was, was getting so high, he was taking yeah, yeah, over. Yeah. And I just had no idea. I just thought I'm doing my job right. No one else is doing their job right. You know, and it came, it came to a head when I got pulled in by my governor, who's, who's a really good friend of mine now. Mm. But at the time, I've we, seen the we, some of the interviews you've we, done. We butted so. heads big time, and and she um, 
and she pulled me in. She was like, right, I'm, I'm, I'm getting way too many complaints. Like, what is going on? You know, staff are complaining about you. Prisoners are complaining about you. Um, and at the time, you know, my mates had me back. I was like, I'm just doing my job. You've got people who won't do their job right and blah, blah, blah. I'm just defending myself and other people and blah, blah, whatever. Um, I was angry instantly, like mm. instantly on the defensive at that because I just thought, yeah, no. And um, and she said, she said to me, I don't know if you've heard this or not, but she said to me, um, I've had this complaint off this prisoner, right? And you will have done actually because you watched the documentary we made. And she said, I've had this complaint off this prisoner. And this is a six foot tall guy, like big guy, you know, bigger than me. You know, I'm one person. Like, how am I terrorizing a wing of prisoners? Like, come on. And she said, he's, he's wrote in this letter. Um, if I had the choice between being in a shark tank with a shark or being on the prison landings with Jess Feely, yeah. I'd pick the shark tank every time. Wow. <laughs> so Jess was in turmoil like, then. And I'm just like, what? Like, what? How am I? No. And obviously that made me hit the fucking roof. Yeah. I was just like, this is a fucking joke. How are you taking this seriously? Like, I'm one female officer, you know. I'm, But everyone else could see that I was just, Struggling. you know. Yeah. yeah. And and I wasn't someone who wouldn't put up a fight either. Like, mm. I... I I, w- I could t- I could cause carnage if I wanted to, mm. and um, so I, I stormed out her office. You know, she jokes about it now and says I took the door for it, it up its hinges and whatever else. And I left that obviously fuming. And then as soon as I left, I broke down. Yeah, because like, you knew it actually hit home. Like you knew they had a point. You knew there was yeah. truth to what they were saying. Yeah, I knew that it wouldn't have come from nowhere. Um, but I was upset anyway. Like I was just at breaking point anyway. I was fighting through every day, mm. um, and. I, I broke down then after that and, and she got me back in the next day and was like, what is going on? Mm. Like, I know there's something wrong. Like, what is it? And I said to her at that time, I was like, I, I, there is something. And I was upset. I was like, there is something, but I can't, I can't tell you. Mm. I can't tell you right now. Like, and I, I hadn't told my family at the time. I hadn't told anybody. Like, I couldn't sit there and tell work. Mm. I couldn't. Yeah, of course. <laughs> But it, but it made me realise, like, right. This is needs to be addressed. <laughs> I'm at a turning point in my life now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So she's talking to me. She's like, oh, we'll get you a mentor and we'll get you this. We'll, we'll get you help or whatever else. And I'm sitting there listening. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going off sick in my head. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm you going. knew you was at that point. I just like, need to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just listening to her and I'm thinking, I'm not coming in tomorrow. So whatever. Mm. And um, and so we had. Crying. And so we had that conversation and. uh Go and sit down. We had that conversation and yeah, I went off sick after that. And uh, and I knew then obviously that I had to, because my mum and dad were going to be like, why are you off sick? You know, yeah, it's, of course. And you know, my mum's psychic as it is, should have been chief investigator. <laughs> like you cannot get away with shit with Sharon. So look, <laughs> I like that. So <laughs> how, how long since being on sick to telling the fam? Not long. So, I'm, so I made the decision to tell them and I was like, right. I, you know, was that I've another s- sit them all down moment? Yeah, I was like, and I've said it many, many times. I was like, you know what? I, I was at the point where I was like, I don't want to die, but I don't want to live anymore. So what are we doing? Mm. Like, what are we doing? What am I doing? Like, what? I like you were just existing at I that either, point. Yeah, like I either die and I take my own life now, or I, I try and do this and see if I can do it. So obviously, I didn't want to die. Like, I didn't want to leave my family. I didn't want any of that. But I knew that my mental. Sp- my mental state was in such a bad way that I couldn't carry on as Jess. Like, I didn't want anything else as Jess. I was stunted as Jess. I didn't want to achieve anything as Jess. I didn't want a relationship as Jess. I didn't want anything else as Jess. I could not be Jess anymore. And um, so I was like, right, I'm going to have to do this then, Anna. And I've always said to everybody throughout my life, when it feels scary to jump, you jump. Jump, Otherwise, you stay in the same place your entire life. And it was my time to listen to me on advice and do this and I had to do it I had I just had to do it and so I sat them all down again and um absolutely shit in a brick and my dad decided to put his foot in it again play the jokes and whatever else and he goes and they're all guessing at this point like right you're pregnant like no <laughs> try again <laughs> you're getting a puppy no <laughs> and then my dad barges in like <laughs> absolute joking he's like you're not having a sex change are you like as a joke 
Like, as a joke, mate, mate a joke. And he, he did not expect that to be the answer. Like, it was an absolute joke. So at that joke. point, did you just go, yeah? And I was just like, oh, shit. Like, oh, my God. I was just, and I just nodded. I was like, yeah. Did they think you were joking then? Or was, did the vibe change then? Was the it like, no, oh, shit, vibe, like, this vibe, is real? The vibe changed and... and you know, my my fa- my whole family have been incredible. Yeah, but of at this time, but it's it's big news because it you've had a year to process this at this point. Yeah. So so as soon as I said this, right? So I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, he just went yellow. Like he was, he was absolutely gobsmacked. And they all were. You know, the only person who had an inkling, an inkling, was my mum. And and even my mum says now, you know. I'd, I'd heard things and what she'd said in the past and blah, blah, blah. But she says now, like, it still felt like a massive slap across the face. Like, yeah. she she was looking at me thinking, Shock. oh, my God, like, she's reached a point now where she, she's going to have to do this or she's not going to be here anymore. Mm. Like, and my, that's what my mum says. Like, she was just thinking, you've reached that, you've reached that point. I'd rather gain Jackson than lose Jess. Like. <sighs> so, obviously, like, that was... It was a crazy, it was a crazy conversation and it was really ha- hard and the fear that hits a family. Yeah, of course. When you say something like that. And, and like say in a small that's, town. That's what I want to battle because the the fear like, and, you know, and that's why I give so, mu- so many people so much understanding because it doesn't just affect me. Mm. Like it affects my family, it affects my friends, it affects my colleagues, it affects everybody. And especially my mum and dad who like, they gave birth to a daughter. Mm. They named that daughter. You know, they had thoughts and dreams about that daughter. And they've been saying Jess for 28 years. Like, if you tell me now your name's Sharon, I'm not just going to go, yeah, sound all right. I'll just start calling yeah. you Sharon. I love that you have a that understanding. human brain no. doesn't work like yeah. that. And, you know, as much as someone doesn't die, you do have to grieve a person. Yeah, and of course. I've had to grieve Jess. You know, my brother and sister have had to grieve Jess and my mum and dad and and all these things, and anyone who knew Jess in any way, shape, or form, you have to process that. Mm. Um, and it was hard for, like, the first few months. It was really hard, and, and you know, especially me and my dad, like, we butted heads a lot because yeah. he didn't want to let go of his little girl, and he didn't yeah. understand it. And his first reaction, w- you know, when we was having that conversation mm. was, right, well, we're going to have to leave Wigan. Mm. I'm going to end up punching everybody. Yeah, because he assumed like, you're going to get into a yeah. lot of fights and, with... And the instant approach from from all of them was... You're gonna get a world of abuse. Like you're gonna get this is you know, and it is. It's dangerous to be. It's dangerous to be trans, and um, you know, people want to kill you just for existing. And it, it's just scary for them. And you know, my mum says all the time, like, life's hard enough. Mm. You know, like, why yeah. do you, I don't want you to have to go through that as well? Like, give it me. I'll go through it. Mm. But I don't want to watch my child go through that. And yeah, of course, my sister. You know saying you just don't want to watch someone you love go through that yeah, you don't want to think about all the abuse that they might get and you don't want to think that they'll get that um so for a long time you know me and me and my dad especially were like he was very much like you'll you'll all you'll be your jessica though that's who you, you know if we had an argument and he'd call me jess and he'd call me she or whatever and and obviously i'd be like listen I'm, I'm, this is happening and mm. He was like, yeah, but you'll always be Jessica. And it was really, really, do- really, really tough for him to get the head around. And at one point, I literally just had to say, listen, it's it, it's either a dead daughter or a living son. Like, we, this is this has to happen. I can't do this anymore. Like, I can't continue. And do I don't care. you think they understood the severity of it then when you said that? Is I mean, that I, I had to say that a lot. Like, I had mm. to, I, it was a recurring conversation you know uh, we sat down and spoke a lot over and over again and I had to keep you know trying to help them understand and and I said listen I don't care if you make mistakes for the rest of my life all I care about is that you try Mm. all I care about is that you just try and that you accept and I acknowledge how I'm feeling and what I'm doing because this needs to happen for me. I'm still the same person. I'm still the same soul, but I cannot be on this planet anymore with Jess as the image. And I think for a lot of people, and and this is not me, you know, saying anything, there's anything wrong with this at all, but a lot of a lot of trans people, you know, they see that as the dead name. They see that person as completely gone and want to wipe any, rem- any memory of that. And for me, that wasn't the case you know Mm. Jess has been a massive part of my life and 
I like to think that I've just brought Jess along with me and you know, I've never got rid of a single picture. I I, I post pictures I see, all the yeah, time on of your Jess. Instagram, there's always you pictures know, of Jess. Yeah. I I that is my life. I'm not gonna delete mm. twenty eight years of my life and and for my family as well, you know, I I didn't want to, to put them through that and I brought everything about Jess that is here with me now. I just couldn't have her at the forefront anymore. Mm. And I think coming together eventually and, and you know and we're still learning now two years later but but watching everything that's gone on over the last few years and watching everything that I've said and I've done and and trying to put myself out there and you know seeing the things that I've done my family have, have come leaps and bounds and they've been absolutely incredible yeah, and yeah. my dad like he told me a story the other day right and he um he started a new job uh, and he's he's the manager somewhere I, I don't know but he was the, he's the boss and he's sat right in like the admin bit and he's listening to these women have a conversation right and um and this is the man who wanted to leave Wigan like genuinely and he sat there and he's listening to these women of of I don't know her name so I call her Tracy and they're having these conversations and Tracy's like the sixty year old woman well you know if I think if you're born this that's what you are and and blah blah blah. And not being malicious, just, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, it's just a conversation. It's that misunderstanding and yep. it's ignorance. And if it doesn't affect your life, you know, you don't, you know, it's mm. it's lack of education. And and I think from seeing me, the way I deal, deal, deal with things, the way I approach things and, and obviously going through it himself and mm. knowing that you need that time to process and whatever else. Um, And so he's listening. He's sat there listening to this conversation, right? And wow. he's quite new to this company and yeah. only a few people knew about, know about like me and his kids and whatever else. So he went to one of the HR women who knew and he was like, what do I do here? Like, how do I tell Tracy this? Because if, if I, if I go and tell her that now, she's going to want the floor to swallow her up. Yeah. Like she's going to feel absolutely horrendous, especially because I'm the boss. Like, yeah, God, imagine that. So this woman's like, it's all right, I'll go and speak to her. So, um, so he went up to her later on in the day and he was like, you're all right now, love, you know, and this woman just burst out into tears, mm. like was absolutely devastated. It was like, I'm so sorry, Terry. Like I didn't, I didn't mean it. I didn't, I didn't know. Like I did blah, blah, blah. And my dad was just like, it's okay. Like mm. it, it's okay. But just, just be mindful. Like when you, you know, about what you're saying and. And, and think about it before you say these things and you know go on his youtube and go on his podcast and, and all these things and honestly and he came home and he told me that and i was literally i was so moved because i just thought and i said to him i was like have you any idea what you've just done mm. like at all like you have just changed a mindset yeah and and she'll, and she'll take that home and tell her partner or her kids or you know a sister or somebody that conversation will come up in her personal life and it's like yeah. a ripple effect and she will yeah and you've you've just changed one mindset and by changing one mindset you've probably changed a hundred yeah like 100%. you have no idea what you've just done and I felt so proud of him in that moment and I literally tell that story in my like public like, like when I guess speak now because that. how like how powerful is that two years later that the I know, man it's only two years and it probably took. A good oh my god year to yeah do you know what i mean it's it's just it's still quite new yeah but how far you've all come as yeah. a unit the and feel just, is it's yeah. like and just seeing the light back in my eyes now mm. and knowing that i want to wake up in the morning yes. and i want to achieve all those all these things and i'm putting myself out there and you know and people have said to me my auntie said to me not long ago because he doesn't say a lot to me you mm. know he's he's he doesn't he hasn't got a massive amount of words about it to me yeah but to other people you know he said he said um Oh, he's so brave. Or like, he must have really needed to do that to put himself through that surgery. Mm. You know, like... He's understanding. He's understanding and they're all understanding so much more. And I just think allowing people to process that is so important because you have to give people the, the time themselves to... But to really truly understand the, the and and then it's authentic and it's organic yes and it's, yes i was just gonna say that I mean? so that's the point I, w- I said like at the very very beginning tell me to shut up by the way because i'm not letting you talk no no i love it I lo- <laughs> no because it's me i'm asking because i'm interested and like, i know i know we've had this conversation but again like you can tell someone once it doesn't really stick like it's it's i love going over the detail of it because it does it does feel more authentic and it does let you understand it on a deeper level um so yeah at the very beginning we were saying like it's you know the dogs Go and sit down. <laughs> it's um, it is that that level of 
authenticity to yeah. the understanding and it's because you allow people to do it in their own time yeah. so you're not just saying like like just this is how it is now and it's absolutely full stop like you you literally said you can make mistakes for the rest of life as, as long as you're trying mm. and you said that to me when we first met when we first met back up um you was like yeah just go for it like don't worry about anything because it's coming from love and you're trying and you're just trying yeah, to learn exactly. but that is that is what i hope everyone takes away is is to have that patience, compassion and understanding for people because you'll be met with it in reverse. Yeah, Whereas like if you just like jump down my throat and shouted at me because I've done something wrong unintentionally, then it then you know it makes it, people it, retreat it, and then they go, oh my God, I'm never then, never doing that again. Just on that conversation again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas if you're like, Oh actually I can see why you thought that, but it's more this mm. way and like it's it's the way you respond to something then relates to how someone responds back to you. Yeah. And because you've done it in such a way with your family, I mean, you've got a proper tight family unit anyway, everyone can see that, but because it's been <laughs> such an authentic timeline of you've let them grieve a version of Jess and meet a version of Jackson, and you've, you've let them go through it in their own pace mm. while still struggling massively yourself, I think that's why it feels so so genuine and so lovely now like when you see it on your instagram and your story and stuff because you've seen you've been very honest about the yeah. whole timeline of it and it's and it is genuine and it is authentic and you can feel that there's there's a true understanding it's not like that sort of false awkward political yeah, exactly, correct yeah. they're, like, just, they're not just trying to support the child they really yeah, they're, they're not, really starting to yeah. understand and they're learning but even like aw away from your family because obviously your family is one thing but like just with like friends or acquaintances or just mm -hmm. strangers when you're doing these guest speaking and stuff like yeah. the the fact that um the fact that you do receive that like, it's very it's it's very apparent do you know what i mean yeah. and, and it allows people to open up and want to talk and ask questions and yeah. and i think i think anyone watching that's the biggest thing to take away from it is to remember that you know the way you receive people or the way you put yourself out is absolutely how they will return that energy 100%, to you yeah 100 so percent because you're doing it with so much patience and understanding yeah regardless of how you personally feel about the situation i think that's a very good skill to have to be so passionate about something and have obviously very personal mm. you know relation to the situation but to be able to put that to a side and say i can see your point let's talk about it yeah. that's a fucking skill yeah. like not a lot of people have to be able to detach like that and be able to see Tracy's point of view and to talk it out and then to let her go on with a yeah, different mindset just go off on one and be because like, you've come at her calmly and just yeah. yeah because that's how that's how things change and you know and it's important I think it's important to talk about the hard bits like yeah. my family are incredible I am so lucky to have such a tight unit and mm. we have always been like that and this has been our hardest test yet don't yeah. get me wrong but people ask me mom you know do you think it's brought you closer and and she's like you know what i think it has yeah. like, it's really brought us closer it's made us so much stronger and 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 now everything i'm doing i i brief them i give them explanations for it you know especially if i'm trying to make a point and i'm doing something a bit out there and i will talk to them about it and i'll send them messages so that my mum's got it because i know they're going to get questions and yep. i'll send her a message be like just in case you get questions this is what i'm doing this is why and she'll text me and she'll be like uh, I've just just read that text message out to such a body, and and they were like, oh, yeah, I get, I get it. That's amazing, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it helps. And sh and she texts me things like, thanks for that. I just really want to understand. Yeah, of course. It's like feeling like you're a part of it. Yeah, and to just include them, you know, you don't have to, because I've not done this on my own. Mm. Like I have not done this on my own, and and you can't do this on your own. Like you need mm. you need a support system, and there will always be someone. But sometimes that someone need your understanding back yeah 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 yeah. 100%. to be the person because so many people wanted to be there for me when i came out and i didn't want to let them i was so ashamed and embarrassed of 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 when i'd come out i'd lost everything that jacks was of jess was and i didn't know who jacks was yet i didn't want people to see me in this awkward in-between stage mm. of like still looking exactly like jess but i'd shaved my head and but I didn't know who Jax was and I'd lost this identity that I'd built up as Jess that I was so proud of. And I just didn't want people to see me feeling so awkward and embarrassed. And I, I completely just lost my point. Are you saying <laughs> about like including your family oh, throughout yeah, the yeah, process? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I tried, to, I tried to run off and I wanted to just go away and disappear and come back looking how I do now two years later, you mm. know. And and you can't do that. Like if you involve people wanted to be there for me. Yeah. So let them. Yeah, let yeah, them yeah. help you let them support you and help them to understand and 
let them go on the journey with you because yeah. letting every single person who I've come across, whether that's my family or my colleagues or the prisoners, letting them go on that journey with me over the last two years is constantly giving other people the courage to change their own life. Yeah. Yeah, people yeah. have come up to me and been like, you're the reason I've left my marriage. You're the reason I've done this. You're the reason. And I'm not advocating like leaving no, your but marriage. When but there's, you know there's a choice that needs to be made because you're yeah. miserable. People are making advocate, difficult decisions. Yeah. People are listening and going, if you can do that and walk back to a prison gate, at work, yeah. is this really that hard? Yeah, absolutely. Because as you know, just as much as me, whatever you are not changing, you're choosing. Oh, and you have to do this shit. So... I didn't intend to go on this journey and inspire so many people. I just needed to do it for me to stay alive. And, you know, I said this to you not long ago, every decision that I made, especially in the first 12 months was, well, I'll do this or I die. Yeah. And I'm ready to die anyway. So I'm just going to do this All and in. see what happens. So, yeah. and it's the best thing I ever did. And if you're going to die tomorrow, what do you want to do? Yeah. Because that's, ha- that's my mindset. That's how it was. And that's how it will continue to be. Whether it make whether it's whether it's terrifying, whether it's difficult, whether it's something I absolutely do not want to do, yeah. I'm doing it. Do you know what I love as well is when you said um, that basically you wanted to disappear for two years and come back as the version of yourself now. Like, how many times have we had that conversation? Yeah, mate, I've been through it recently. Like at the beginning of this year, I was like, okay, close your eyes. I just want to fast forward. I'm going to be at this point. I'm going to be have this in my career, have this in my yeah. personal life, this in my love life, blah blah blah. And, and you only ever have those thoughts when you are in the shit, yeah. when you are in like the depths of it. And you just, it's so funny because you, 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 like you want to skip, you want to skip everything. But if you skip the hard bit, as mm. cheesy as it sounds, you skip that, you skip the lessons. Exactly. So I look back now, obviously completely different situations, yeah. but when you are going through that hard time and you're waking up every day and thinking, oh mate, I, c- I can't even, like, what am I doing? Yeah. And you feel lost. It's, it's everything on those day-to-day bits and like, leaning on your family leaning on your friends yeah. and then you look back now as the really happy like just version of yourself that yeah. you were picturing two years ago and you think oh my god i wouldn't have wanted to actually fast forward all that shit yeah, no. because it wouldn't feel as amazing now no exactly if, yeah you if wouldn't, i didn't you do wouldn't, that you wouldn't have gained all that 100%. strength like if you're climbing a mountain if you just flew and got dropped off at the top you'd be it's like, not the yeah, same sound i'll go now yes but if you'd like put your blood sweat Earned and tears it. into yeah. climbing that mountain so true. and Such couldn't get up like and by the time you get up the fulfillment and and that's what it is that it's about enjoying the journey it's about 100 like you know like when i was younger you know miley cyrus um the climb Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah, song yeah. used to break me, and yeah. and now I know why. Yeah, since but the, since the, the, the lyrics in the song used to just break me. Me and yeah. my mum, like, it came on in the car once. Me and mum were just crying. So emotional. <laughs> we both didn't even know why. And I was like, this song just makes me cry. Looking and out the window look, when it's raining, pretending you're in a music video. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, just gazing out like, oh, Slow listen motion, to West black Life. And white. <laughs> We've all done that. We've all looked out of a window and pretended we was in a music video. Mate, I still do it. <laughs> Life's a music video, mate. I need a theme tune. 100%. I want a theme tune when I walk down the street. <laughs> no, but honestly, yeah, like that, that, um, that hindsight of looking back and thinking, again, a lot of cliches coming out, but the level of gratitude I have mm. for my happiness and my life and everything that I've got now and like the relationships are deeper. So in those moments as well, when you're saying like you didn't want to reach out to anyone, yeah. I found that in those hard moments where you're thinking, oh God, like everyone knows me as this really strong, independent, bubbly person, mm. shit, I'm going to have to ask for help. Once you do, that relationship automatically just got stronger because somebody feels valued that yeah. they can help you, that you trust them. So I've done it um, with with a couple of my close friends, like a couple of my girls at the beginning of the year and just like been like, this is what's going on. Yeah. And nobody else knows this and please fucking help. And then, yeah. do you know what I mean? Since then, like that, those relationships are just, you know, we've known each other for 10 years, but the last 10 months have just been, there's an intensity and a gratitude and a level of love that yeah, just wasn't, you know what, it's so you much You know deeper. what you've been through, you've been through so much together and like, like we, it like allows we, them to connect to me you. and you, you know, so passionate about vulnerability and I say this, oh, 100%. in every talk that I do now at anyone, any conversation, I talk about vulnerability and how like people are brought up to believe it's being weakness, vulnerable it's is weak and being courageous is brave and I love talking about that because if you're not willing to put yourself in a position for it to go really fucking bad, yeah. then 
can't go really fucking. We can't good. go really fucking amazing yes. either. Like I don't want like I, I, I actually said this to a prisoner the other day. I was like, if you have one foot in the future and one foot in the past, you're gonna piss all over today. <laughs> and he looked that. at me and he was like, oh yeah. I and love I just that. Thought, <laughs> so true. But you've. You've, you've just got to go, I'm doing this or I'm not. Like, it's because otherwise, what are you doing? You're just sitting here in this. I, I don't want this average life where I'm not achieving yeah. my true potential. I'm not doing what gives me fire in my belly. I'm not, you know, and whatever does that, if if that if that is a happy home life and a nine to five job. Yeah, of and course. Whatever else, happiness is different for everyone. Do that, you know, but you have to find your own happiness and the happiness is is enjoying the little things in your everyday life. Yes. It's not one day. 100%. I'm happy now. Like, it's Which the little tiny things that you learn to love. So much more when you've had a run. Even if it's only, you know, I mean, you said, like, from, from being young, you felt like there was always something disconnected. But even if, like, I just had literally a six-month period, that's it. Yeah. Always been happy. Never, luckily, never struggled with mental health or anything like that. But I had a six-month period where I was just like, okay, mm. I need some fucking help. Um, and, and, and going through that, even at such a little amount of time, that just the level of gratitude you yeah. feel when you've had, I almost feel like in a weird way, everyone needs to experience, yeah, I'm not yeah, saying yeah. like deep depression or anxiety, yeah. but a level of hardship that just makes you really face yourself and be like, what what the fuck do I want from life? What mm. am I doing? And 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 how do I get to what yeah, I want? Because yeah, yeah. we all want to click, see the results and yeah. fast forward. But it's only now looking back where I'm like, oh God, remember that conversation when I was sat in Abby's house and I was crying yeah. and she had to buy me tea and you know this and that. And, and, and you look back at those moments and think, it's weird because at the time that felt like one of the worst nights of my life. Yeah. But looking back, it's like one of my favorite memories. Yeah, it's one of the most vital points and in your like, life where you go, I'm going this way, I'm going that way. Yeah, and like, and then you do like people connect with you more, and like she felt so loved and useful to me now. And then you know, there's like a, mm. it's reciprocal, and then they don't mind opening up to you a little bit. Yeah. Then and it's like it just opens up this whole other level of, of rather than just being like. Hi, Lucy. All right, what's up? Yeah, buzzing, man. Yeah, of course. Like, should we get going? Da, da, da. Yeah, and then, yeah, like, yeah. and you just surface buzz level bollocks. Surface level yeah. happiness bollocks when really you feel completely different. Whereas, mm. like, sometimes, like, if I, like, you know, <laughs> time and a place. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Like when you just say like actually no I feel like fucking shit man like yeah. this is this is what's happening in my personal life like what do you think and then like same with me and you I could have this really deep chat. Mm. About like, oh my God, this is everything that's happening. Every box of your life, professional, personal, yeah, 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 was yeah, like, yeah. oh my God, <laughs> what is going on? Is this, like, is this a quarter life, like mid quarter life crisis? Like what the fuck is going on? And it felt like one thing after another from the job to the house to the yeah. da, 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 everything. And then, and then you end up going from like saying it out loud to literally what we've just done and then laughing about it. And then that just takes away its power. Yeah. And then every time we saw each other, it was like, it was mo it was just lighter because you're yeah. not dealing with it on your own. I've literally, I'll not mention names or anything, but this is so weird that we're having this conversation today. So I'll show you obviously off, off this, but somebody's messaged me today, somebody quite close to me and basically said that for a while now, they've been really, really struggling with severe panic attacks to the point where they literally cannot breathe and they've had to excuse themselves. And when they said it and talked me through the situation, I know for a fact I've been with them when they've done that. And I've just thought they were going to the toilet or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and when they said it, I was like, oh, okay, because I didn't realise that was why you kept excusing yourself. I thought, I don't know, like weak mm. bladder whatever like you you just because they come back in they're like hi yeah, and they yeah, buzz yeah, buzzing yeah. and yeah. they're so fucking good at putting on a front of yeah, it aren't we all like yeah. yeah and then so anyway f um i just randomly messaged this morning i was like like hey how you doing just checking in which by the way always always do with your people like you know yeah. you can't say it enough and it was just quite a flippant one it was like hey saw you the other day you looked a little bit stressed you know you was having trouble with a family member um <laughs> what's happening how are you feeling boom just yeah. messaged and opened up completely. But sorry, the point of that was, in the <laughs> message, I go off, I'm on. In the message, this person literally said at the end, so we're back and forth, a few like long messages talking it out. And then at the end, this person literally put, even just saying it out loud yeah. to you, even just this, and it wasn't face to face, it was on fucking text. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I was at work. Um, not that I text when I'm at work, I do my job. <laughs> um, any gyms out there are listening, <laughs> Lucy does a job, just saying, all right, no worries. I was on my break, guys. Yep. Um, yeah, so- <laughs> Sends WhatsApp, don't reply to me, don't she sends WhatsApp. <laughs> no, anyone listening, I am mad for that, like, so 
Once I start replying, full attention then, you've got me for an hour. <laughs> Go on, carry but on. Until I get to the reply, <laughs> there could be a two-week gap. Um, yeah, and at the end of this, sorry, the point of that was that j- just saying it out loud and she was like, oh my God, I can't believe mm. I've actually told someone what's been going on. Yeah, this is what's happening. I already feel better for it. And it's just, it's just the same. Sometimes talking about it just takes its power away. Oh, 100%, or, or lessens yeah, 100%, it, at yeah. least. And it's about, it's about sharing your experiences and your feelings, but not putting it on somebody else so you're yes, not absolutely. you're not giving it that person and saying fix me yeah yeah yeah. you're just saying yeah this is how i'm feeling da, 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 you know it, i'm not looking for feedback i'm just wanting you know, to say it yeah like obviously if you if you want advice or give advice whatever but you're not you're not placing it on that person yeah in an emotionally draining way yes 100 percent. you're just talking about it and airing it out and you know making it lighter for both of you because if yeah. you just pile it on that person yeah i've had that as well then on, that's not other, you know and, and yeah. people can't handle that and and i feel that now and when if i feel that now i'm like i retreat because yeah. i'm like i can't take just i can't take that yeah. that like negativity if it, you know it's there's a difference between you have to be aware of the energy speaking, you speaking yeah yeah and speaking yeah. and sharing your, your issues which is always like i couldn't not advocate that enough but yeah I think I just made a point, but I don't know if I did made it right. No, no, I get what you're saying, hundred percent. So, like, <laughs> I get what you're saying is in like, so don't um, be aware of how if you are it's telling about somebody self awareness, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, if you are telling somebody something that has weight to it, basically, literally the way you did it, this is a very serious issue that I need to fucking talk yeah. about, but. I also understand that it's going to affect you and I'm open for yeah, a reciprocal yeah, yeah, yeah. conversation. This isn't just me saying yeah. this and then just leaving you to reel with your own emotions. Yeah. So I'll definitely what you're saying, like if, if you're the person who has something heavy you need to talk about, just be aware of how you put that on the other person. And on the flip side, as the person listening, yeah. don't, automatically try and fix it yeah, i was take that on i was murdered for that so like i was just the fixer and if you said something <laughs> was wrong honestly, what, what was you the fixer <laughs> and like honestly man like if somebody said something i don't know why yeah. like this people pleasing fucking need yeah, yeah, yeah. and if somebody said like oh you know this this issue like it couldn't it wouldn't even be something big oh, i don't really want to work saturday okay so what we'll do is uh if you ring it yeah, 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 yeah. she, she didn't yeah. ask you to fucking help you she's want just everyone saying to, you know. and i was just like i would take on issues yeah. that weren't mine without the person asking me to and then get mad yeah i, <laughs> get I, mad. I, I, I was like i'm fixing all this for everyone <laughs> nobody gives a fuck blah, blah, blah. and i've done this i have done this i, I will fully admit i have done this yeah. because i think a lot of people listening might resonate um someone's come to you with a problem they're not asking for advice they're not asking for your help mm. but the fixer <laughs> mindset comes in and you start trying to fix it for them and give them advice that they're not ready to hear yet if somebody ever comes to me as like loose i really need your opinion on this or i want to talk about yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely but if someone's just come in with a normal everyday grievance you yeah. know it's ranting <laughs> you don't have to yeah like really take it on and like really you know analyze it and yeah. come up with be it be there just don't make it yours it, yes absolutely be there but just don't make it yours and i mm. i in the past was really bad for that yeah really bad for just thinking and it's hard and sometimes you will especially if you really care about that person yeah of course but you certainly don't have to you don't have to save anyone else's life like that is yeah ultimately as difficult as it is your happiness is your responsibility yeah absolutely and you have to do all the little things in life that add up to you living the life that you want to live because if you take care of all the tiny little habits the results will take care of themselves anyway your future is hidden in your daily routine 100 percent. yeah my daily routine is properly shite but you know we're dealing (laughs) with that you're smashing it you're doing very well (laughs) oh my relationship with food is McDonald's. <laughs> oh yeah, you've, you've actually, you have actually said this. But again, like life's very cyclical. So like there yeah. will be times where your focus is your fitness yeah, and then exactly. there'll be times yeah, where yeah, your yeah. focus is your career and then there'll be times where your focus is, you know, your, your personal life. Or so, yeah, exactly, yeah. And sometimes it is very hard and I think almost unrealistic to think you can always have a balance of them all. Yeah. I don't think there's ever such a thing as like balance. No. It's not like... It's a journey of finding the balance. Love, yeah, yeah, 25% yeah. Percent Family. Like life you is the ju- if, as long as you are trying to find the balance i think you're on the right track yeah. i think if you're just all on one and you just disregard the other yeah, you're gonna lose who you are but i think one will always take a slighter focus yeah. when it needs to yeah exactly like I yeah, said, yeah. at the beginning of this year i had to take an office job <laughs> <laughs> Can you just wipe that microphone, please? Uh, I didn't Mate, ask you've been you breathing to come and, deep I on yours. You've been breathing deep on yours. I did not ask you to come and, l- and, and lick my new microphones. <laughs> I'm 
dogs. All right. Both the dogs have been on it. I've been screaming all over it. Whoever comes next. <gasps> Sorry, guys. Um, yeah. Hundred. What, wait, what was I saying? I forgot now. Oh, the office job. Yeah. So, like, yeah, there'll, yeah. there'll be a point. And obviously, that was never the career I wanted. It was literally just to get a mortgage. Yeah. So, it, and at the time, that's all I had the mental energy to do. And I'm literally known as, yeah. like, the kickboxer, the PT, the fitness coach. Like, do you know what I mean? So to, to lose that identity yeah, yeah, and yeah. have to focus on just office job, I was so drained when I got home. I couldn't be asked going to the gym. Yeah. So it's it's just learning to to give yourself that, um, what's the just word? L- like, just getting perspective and prioritise. Uh, yeah, prioritising it. Like, at that time, that's what I needed to do to get the mortgage, to get that, to move forward yeah. to, for, for an end goal. So I didn't like sit there and like beat myself up every night mm. that I wasn't, it was like, no, no, this is my focus now. And then as soon as the mortgage came through, I quit. <laughs> 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 Mortgages don't like self, self-employed people. So this is mortgage advisors listening to this. Please know. just forget everything she just said. It was <laughs> never pre-planned. It all happened very quick. <laughs> it was coincidental. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you have to you have to go through all the shit in life to gain perspective on what matters and what that that life is really too precious to oh, be 100%. anything but happy. Did you watch the, um, that program on Saturday night, Queens of the Night? No. Oh my that. god! You know what? It was amazing. It is like just um, up, like celebrity on? men. It was on ITV. Lorraine Kelly was hosting it, oh, I love and it. it was like Steve McDonald off Corey was on it, and they were oh, being yeah. drag queens for the night. Oh my god! And love. they were getting coached by you know professional drag queens and whatever mm-hmm. else, and um, oh I can't remember the, his name now. England ex ex England rugby player might still be a rugby player actually. Um, big tough guy, you know, and he was doing this right, so he's getting dressed up as a drag queen, and the guy, um, the the drag queen coaching him, um, so she when she was drag queen whatever and was was teaching him all these things, and she was dressed as drag for the night so and she said to him at the end of his performance she was like you have blown my mind because you have gone from the the lad who I was scared of in school to showing me how beautiful a person you are and that we need to continue getting rid of this toxic masculinity because there is just no room for it like why can men not embrace the feminine side yeah, and yeah, just yeah. do whatever they want to do and and I just thought it would just give me goosebumps because I just thought that's beautiful like that yeah, is the thing yeah, that yeah. is the stuff that we need to be doing because the point of so many people will see a program like that and just think yeah it's a good laugh and it's funny and whatever else but actually the meaning behind it, it is, is smashing yeah. toxic masculinity yeah. out of the fucking water and yeah. I felt so proud to watch it but one of the other guys I on it said that. one of the other guys on it said after it Life is too short to be anything but happy. So why not try everything new? Try everything out of your comfort zone and, and just do it because you might find something that you have so much passion and love for yeah. that that it would just completely turn your life upside 100%. down. This is what we were saying about like um it, a lot of it a lot of it is fear. And oh it's just mate, so you easy know how to I feel stay about fear. I know, but it's so easy <laughs> for people to stay comfortable and just be like, Well, that's too scary. But that's why it's great what you're doing because because what you have done is like, you know, probably the biggest. Do you know what I mean? Like in terms of change, like life change and family change and just everything. So like when somebody is, you know, I had to take an office job for six months. Fucking hell. Does it matter? Do you know what I mean? Like when it's so the the what you're doing and saying like you, you just have to go for it. If you know you've got a bigger end goal, yeah. then just take the steps that you need to take as hard as they are at the time. Because look what people like Jacks are doing. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like literally going from not wanting to be here anymore to making sure that other people don't feel like that. Yeah. So uh, yeah. it's just and and, and that's what I mean. It's not about gender. It's about life. Oh yeah, like 100%. My, my message is not about. And, and you know this, but my message is not about about gender at all, really. It's about about doing what's true to you because if you don't do it now, yeah. if you don't do it now, it's only going to slap you in the face twenty years later when you have a midlife crisis yeah. and you end up divorced and upset and, uh, and heartbroken, not know what you're doing because yeah. you've not done what's truly right for you. Yes. Because you can't mask, you can't keep it on forever. The mask will always It'll slip. Catch up. Yeah, 100%. yeah, and if you're not one hundred percent authentically you. Then, then it's gonna, it's, it's just gonna hit you it in the face get, when you yeah, really don't 100%. want it to. But because all you do is suppress and suppress and suppress, and you, all you're doing is shaking up a bottle. Yeah. And it's just gonna, it's, it's just gonna open at some point and explode. hundred percent. 
Oh. I love that. 100%. And we I don't think we've even delved into half the conversation that Oh, we've not on. at all, but like this is what I'm saying. So like when we just said then, like it's not specifically about gender, that's just personal to your experience. Mm. It's it's so like everyone experiences the same emotions different levels for different reasons but you felt sad you felt angry you felt happy like everyone can relate to the emotion yeah, exactly whether yeah. it's a different trigger for it so with you like talking about the fear aspects and stuff it's about it's so even though it's not just about gender it's so applicable to just life in general because yeah. it's about diagnosing within yourself what why am i so unhappy what is the cause yeah. of this unhappiness yeah dig deep look yourself what? in the mirror and 100%. turn yourself apart i think what is what do i want what's the unhappiness what will what's it take? the fear yeah what's the block what's the step forward yeah. and if you have that little step for everyone yeah for, for every whether it is like you know you've had a, a breakup or mm. you know you, you're moving out of your family home or you fell out with your mom or you've got a job that you don't like or something bigger no matter what it is like the the level of severity in your life yeah you need to diagnose what is making you unhappy what is the fear surrounding it normally other people's opinion well yeah do you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. and 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 what's the step forward that's yeah. always what you've got to be looking at but you yeah. can't figure out your step forward until you actually look yourself in the mirror and think what's the fucking problem and that's the thing that people are more scared of yeah. looking yourself in the mirror yeah and honestly like uh, yeah because you, you were taking loads of step forward you were you were in the arm in the raf you were getting you know yeah. big big rugby tours I never like once you, looked myself in the mirror you were doing really you were taking lots of steps forward yeah but not in relation to what the problem was. No, exactly. And so you're that's just the first step. It. Yeah. And people are terrified of of looking in. Uh, you have to develop an ability to look inside yourself. Yeah. And that is the scariest, hardest thing. That's that, where this comes in, that though. That's where people, these conversations, yeah. that's what this is for. Yeah. And doing things like this. Like, I. And, and we've not even got into the prison. We'll talk about that next time. But. Yeah. I'll say one thing. When, um, when I put on. Uh, the trans awareness event for for the, the prisoners and the and the staff and whatever else and those um and one of the lads off off my wing and I can't say his name right so we'll call him Steve he was sentenced to two years in prison right and back in the day they used to give people what's called an IPP sentence which is basically an indefinite sentence oh yeah, I remember you saying this, you know yeah. like if, if you're if you're a nuisance or whatever and, and they thought you were just, just going to keep keep, keep, keep committing crime they just give you an indefinite sentence right so he was sentenced to two years and um, because of, you know, several different things and, and feeling like hopeless and all the things that have gone on and whatever else, he's been in prison for, I think, 16 years now That's wild. and sentenced to two. So he's in his 50s now. And before we went on this event, right, I had three T-shirts made for the event. They all had a butterfly on the front and... Um, on the back, they all had different phrases. So on one of them, it said, uh, be unapologetically you. On the other one, it said, feel the fear and do it anyway. And on another one, it said, remember who you are. And Steve had one of these T-shirts on, right? He had the pink one on. And uh, and he said to me just before this event, he was like, I'm, I'm going to go up there, but I'm going to wear a jumper underneath my T-shirt. So I was like, it's going to be boiling in there. Like, Why? And he was like, well, I've, I've never been off the wing, like, without long sleeves on like this guy's got really bad self-harm scars on oh, his right, arms okay. like deep bad so, you know yeah. like really uncomfortable about them really insecure about them and so and we'd spent months like talking about this event like teaching them all this stuff that we're talking about now or do, you know about all these things and i said to him i was like what does that t-shirt say on the back and he's like be unapologetically you mm. and i was like right i said so what are we doing so sure your scars. So those scars mean that you got through all the things that were trying to hurt you. Mm. So you go up there and you were with pride. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's part of who you are. It's part of your journey. And he was like, you know what? You, like, you're right. And he, he went up there and in front of 150 people, he went up there for the first time in 15 years with no long sleeves on and spoke to all those people, made a speech about the impact I'd had on him on his life, you know, he's turned his life around now. He's on a great path. He'll hopefully be out soon. And told everybody that he could, that what he'd done as well. He told everybody that he'd come up and he had all these scars and he was ashamed of them, but he was, he was being unapologetically himself and he, he was doing this and that he, and that talking to me and knowing my journey, he'd given the courage to do that. And that's what it's about. Like yeah, that is what it's about. It's just about, owning who you are and yeah. going there's nothing to be ashamed of like i just need to do what makes me feel good 
I love that. And that's another one of those moments, like you said, that your dad had at work. It's yeah. It might seem like just a small moment in Tiny a day, thing. but it's a ripple effect because he'll yeah. go and talk to another prisoner or, you know, if somebody visits him and, and that conversation then leads to mm. a load more conversations. So 100%. these ripple effects are what change the world. Yeah, 100%. And if I can go into one of the most volatile places in the world and change mindsets in there, then fucking hell this, cannot right? be doing with our prime minister mate <laughs> oh that's that's another podcast <laughs> that's that's we've um yeah fucking twat that's that's uh that's another conversation but yeah no we should oh 141 oh, no. <laughs> wait what did we say the cap was an hour and a half yeah i think we knew we w- uh, we weren't gonna hit that i mean to be fair for the first one that's not bad i think that's good that's for not the first bad one. i think that's the good for the i first feel one. like there's a I million things to hit but i feel like the the main part of this i mean was to to get to know jacks and the journey that's got you to jacks everything from this point now absolutely future focus what's the next yeah, step yeah, forward yeah. i'm very about that like what's the next step forward but yeah I'm also about just like understanding and learning. Hundred percent, and I'm not scared of talking about Jess. Yeah, I love that. So many things that has happened over the years, mm. I will always refer to or like go back to whatever yeah. else. So don't ever think that we can't talk about anything. But I love that. I'm going to make you talk next time. <laughs> <laughs> That's no problem. And then <laughs> after, after they've got to know you, we can just chat. So do your intro, shit. Jacks. Intro, <laughs> loose. Okay, now, <laughs> now we can talk about. Yeah, now I can talk about life. Thank you, everyone, for listening to yes. the first episode of Live Your <laughs> Truth. Please enjoy wherever you get your podcasts. And what else do we need? Like, subscribe, share, yeah, and help us share it. this amazing, positive, productive message and because and it will save what you wanna, lives. Tell us what you want to talk about. Yeah, and hopefully people fall in love with our soothing voices. Oh, yeah, it could be like... Um, be those radio people like okay <laughs> and now a <on> smooth fm <laughs> cue the laughing button <laughs> oh wait which one is every it time sh- <laughs> <laughs> every time i every time i my single one oh wait i don't stop it oh really every time you every time you tell a joke <laughs> oh there we go that's the one Notice how I went for the oh, crowd. Oh, no, we're not meant to tell the audience that because then I'll, they'll know it's fake. Oh, laughter. yeah. Notice how I went for the crowd one straight away, though. They're cheering. I was like, oh, <laughs> accidental. Uh, right, okay. The dogs are crying for the tea. Yes, so, amazing. It has yeah, been lovely. And I am really glad we're doing it after saying it for so long. And this is not another one of those moments. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Like, we don't have a clue yeah. where this is going to go. I but know. it's just Sat authentic. Sat in my spare room. About, yeah, having, <laughs> just having the chats, it feeling authentic, it, it coming from an authentic place. Like, we're not doing this for any other reason other than, you know, we've we've both been through some mad shit and it's nice to just talk about it and And every time i talk to you i don't ever feel drained i feel inspired oh so that is the difference as well this this definitely is for Mm. the next one we'll we'll delve into this a little bit more but so we've said that about learning how to talk about something like to the depth that we are but with forward progressive Mm. action in front of it so we will say like this is what's going on this is how i know i'm holding myself up but what's the plan and then next time we see each other it's like oh well since then this happened yeah yeah yeah, yeah. do you know what i mean so yeah so it's it's amazing how we can talk about these really really deep things but we don't feel drained but it's because talking about it is just the diagnostic part that we were talking about at the beginning yeah we were talking about a minute ago saying diagnose the problem and then the rest of the conversation Mm -hmm. is but here's how we get through it yeah yeah. And that's hopefully 100%. what this podca- podcast yeah. will be. Yeah. Like just our 100%. little clips of stuff we've learned from books or other podcasts and just, just regurgitating stuff yeah. that we've learned from somebody else that's and helped us get through. Hopefully we can make it um, viewed by a lot of people and, and hopefully help some people. But if we help just one person, oh, I, every little every little episode, then we're doing something I thought right. there was going to be a little test. Every little helps. <laughs> <laughs> I've not got a catchphrase I thought yet. We need, one. we need one. I thought that's what it was going to be. Sponsored by Tesco. <laughs> No, but thank you very much for listening and we will see you all soon. Yeah.